So for those of you who joined us now, <clears throat> apologies. Um, I'm a very important person. My name is Ilan. Um, I now live in New Zealand and I practice photography. And there is a little bit of my links here if you'd like to know more about me. Um, and I would love to start with um, some things that we talked about very briefly when you were here with the family. Um, and I'll just see if that goes to the right screen. So they're all going to the wrong screen, but um, I want to share some of my vision and some of my, uh, yeah, artistic flair. And before that, I'd like to read something from my website. So I'm gonna open that hmm, maybe here. And I'm gonna read something very quickly if I can get my act together. And this is uh, just loading on the other page. It's no problem. I can edit out all the, the little things. That's okay. Um, I'll just put that away and I'll just go here. So I want to quickly read something from my biography. Um, so yeah, I believe in the power of words, but a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and I have something to say about that. And it shows at the heading of my uh, biography. So what I write is photography is the easiest medium of art to be competent in, but it's the hardest medium in which to have a truly personal vision. It's very much like talking. Everyone can talk, but very few have something to say. In creating my work, I aim to demonstrate a clear style to tell a story while being imaginative and thought provoking. My goal is to present work that is strong and distinguished with a clear narrative sense. I wish to inspire people with timeless images that have enduring qualities, to be creative and artistic, to evoke emotions and to show a personal vision. So this is a high goal. I spoke last time with you about people who write in their Facebook tagline, they say, I'm a storyteller and I go, wow. So anyway, I write a lot of words, but you have to walk the talk. Action speaks louder than words. So let's talk about this image here. I created this um, about three years ago. I met this guy at the Sunday market, not too far from my home. He was trying to sell something we call brick and brack, which is junk. Um, and I asked if I could meet him at his home because he looked, he looked uh, nice. He, in his hat, you cannot see it, but he's got three small knives in his hat for reasons beyond my comprehensions. And, <laughs> uh, and he invited me to his home, which was about 15 minute drive from my home. And he was smoking weed as you right. do. And he couldn't open his eyes. He was so puffed out. So this is his living room. He inherited this home from his dad. I think his dad is up here. I think that's his dad, definitely not this one. So um, this is his living room and I actually put two umbrellas to light his place. And um, this is his life, his memorabilia. Um, and I love this photo. So it's not as commercial, but it does tell a lot of stories. If you look at all the little details there, it's fantastic. Yeah, so the, the first thing that strikes me is I would have taken that photo from so much closer, but your ability to, to get all of that life history into that one photo, uh, you're right, it, it is rich with uh, details that you could blow up and look at all individually. So this is, I entered this to a competition, which is very important to me. The New Zealand Institution of Professional Photography runs an annual award and I received the gold for that. So this is in-camera capture, meaning there is no Photoshop here. And it's in situ, meaning this is the person and his life. So he tells more than just his face, which is interesting, but not as well. So I sometimes get a close up and we'll see some of these in a minute. So this is my fine art collection. I don't know why I put that there, but it is there and now we're looking at it. Um, we're gonna try and move to the next photo, huh? Let's see if that works. So this uh, beautiful woman, um, so I met her, I put an ad in a local online magazine saying, are you 
outgoing and, and outrageous. Would you like to create extraordinary work together? And she responded. So she, um, she was a model. She still is a model. She's a beautiful woman. She now lives in Australia, but at the time she lived about uh, 15, 20 minutes away from my home. So we met, we did some photos at the studio and then we went out. It was a stormy day and she enjoyed every minute because the spray went on her. And, you know, many of these women feel sort of connection to nature and catharsis. It was really windy and, and, and rough with the sea. So it looks like she's surrounded with this rock. So some of it is fake. So she was surrounded here. There were some rocks here, but I made them go. So I call okay. this. Uh, I, was, I was picturing her swimming out there. So that's good to know she didn't have to swim and climb up on that. No, rock. she did not. Um, there were no people harmed in this, in creating this <laughs> photo. Uh, and she's still a very good friend of mine. She refers people who come to New Zealand to me. So if they have, um, yeah, some of her friends from Australia come to visit and we'll see one of them hopefully soon. So this is a different type of photo. Um, I'm going to enter it this year under the nature category. Um, this is a, a wild beast. I mean, it was. Um, and I really love that the circular shape against this rough background. Obviously the lions had their share, um, but um, it's very authentic. So this again is in camera capture, not huge fine art about this. It simply is something that I'm going to enter this year. So I thought, why not put it here? Where did you take that photo? So that's in Tanzania. Uh, and that's actually with my cell phone because my camera had such a big lens on it. And I, yeah, so quickly. Um, but even with a cell phone these days, if you're, if you want, so I, there is a saying, people ask me what camera you use. And I say a black one. So what I mean is the camera doesn't take photos. Um, it's the person behind the camera. And this is a good example. Okay, what kind of beast is that thing? Is that a it's ostrich? A wild, it's, or? it's called a, a wild beast. So the wild beast or, or wild beast. Um, beast. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. So here. that's yeah. there is another name, maybe Emi. I can't remember the other name. It's not the Latin official name, but uh, yeah, there's herds of them everywhere, and they're quite uh, fast and they're quite strong. Um, I mean, they're stronger than the zebras, as far as I can tell, because they've got horns and the zebras don't have it. The zebra probably run faster, but they go in a herd and it's, um, I mean, they, yeah. Yeah, it's wild looking. So the, the horns, I thought uh, originally, maybe a sign that my eyesight's going out, but I thought that that was the ostrich neck and head, but uh, I could see the other horn coming around. So yeah, now I got a better view. Of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they are abundant in, in Tanzania. And I won a big award. Maybe we'll see that photo shortly. And Sony sent me all the way to Tanzania to, um, for a safari trip. So we're going to have a few of these, um, two more photos from Tanzania here. Um, this photo is part of my collection that I call Fearless. So this beautiful woman, um, is a small story to tell about this, but basically she's an immigrant. Um, she's a caregiver working with paraplegic um, here in New Zealand. And unfortunately, um, when I started taking these photos, I knew there was something we call here a school bus. So it's a walking school bus. So kids return to school um, very near this location. There is a path and I, I sort of put a, a cloth on a, on a big rope to hide most of this, but a woman came running about 15 minutes after we started the shoot and she said her son saw a dead body here. So we all laughed, oh, um, but police did come to my studio and I had to explain that this was <laughs> a collaboration and I got into small trouble um, for indecent exposure. Not my, but never mind. It's, uh, it was all good, but uh, you know, I really love how those leaves um, sort of embrace her. Mm. Yeah, it does look like a hug. So this is a recent work that I do that I'm going to enter this year. Um, this is a composite. So she did not lie on that rock, but she did lie on a rock. And the other bits of that scene are in camera, meaning they are correct. So this is sort of a tunnel that when the tide goes up and there's a big wave, 
it fills up for a few minutes or maybe a few seconds, and then the water recede um, or recede. So um, I think this is the right place for her to be. And this is in, um, yeah, this is portrait open, meaning I can retouch it and, and add elements and remove elements. So yeah, I think that's, without her, it wouldn't be the same, I think. Yeah, it'd be hard to tell what was going on there. She's a, uh, uh, oh, what would you call it? Negative space last time we were looking at something. Well, she's not negative space, but she's a small thing that allows you to focus and then see everything else in, uh, that's in support of her. So a negative space in my eyes is something different. And we will see photos with negative space. So I'll mention it there. Here, the space is quite busy. It's not negative. It complements her in a way and maybe slightly distracting if you like to be facetious. And some of those judges are known to be constipated and they will find you know, things to um, take off points for. So you could say the water takes away the attention. Um, yeah, I could have put her on dry rock and all that. I photographed this place, maybe a hundred photos and I have some photos of rock without the water around it but I thought the water add dynamic. Um, and so, um, yeah, I tried to tone them down, but still make them oomph. Um, and so that's how I see that photo take shape. And I'm now putting it on sale, yeah. What's, what's the size of that in real life? That's actually, that's actually scaled to size. So this rock is maybe, um, eight feet long from here to here, trying to use your um, right. non-metric measurements. Yeah. Yes, so this is sort of a bridge. I didn't walk on that bridge, but the water caved something underneath it. And, and that's the tunnel goes, you know, where my mouse is. And then they rush in here and they fill this void, maybe for five seconds, 10 seconds. And then the whole thing disappears and it becomes dry in high tide this whole thing is flooded up to here. I know because I was there a second time with another woman um, and she was lying on this because this was too rough to be on. And even here she got sprayed and it was mid-tide. So, um, so, so this is actually sort of, a, as I said, a bridge. The water comes from underneath it and gushes into here. So that's actually a huge space. And I'm using a very wide angle lens hung from a, a, a pole. And that's how I sort of create these from above. Um, and that's actually almost scale, scale to size. So how she's here actually depicts that size of, the, so it gives you scale. Without that, you would think actually that could be very small or huge. So anyway, that put things into perspective. And I like the yeah. fact that she's off center and slightly diagonal. I cannot always create that, but obviously here it fits perfectly. When you say it's for sale, you sell it, uh, the image, uh, you sell the print, uh, you know, you already printed, is that on a, uh, a certain size that you put on your wall? Yes, it's a good question. So I do have on my website, uh, my monetizing for this purpose, I have fine art prints and people can click on an image, make it big on their screen and it will say, by now underneath and when they click they choose the size so i think i have three sizes um, okay. the largest being about three feet long and it okay. comes in a tube shipped to your home uh signed limited edition um and um it's stunning yeah i know so, from experience that they show up in perfect condition even all the way from us uh you know new zealand <laughs> yeah yeah thank you um so anyway, they, they come in a tube. So I, they come with a margin, maybe a two inch margin. And that's where I sign it. So it's perfect for framing and it's printed on Epson premium luster paper. And it's, um, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, people send me photos of those. Uh, and so, so I think framing is a personal choice and that's why I don't create a frame here. It's more fragile, it's more costly to ship and this way People can choose their own frame and trim it to size if they wish. And yeah, priceless in my eyes. Yeah. Um, 
this photo, what does that look to you, Blair? Uh, those look like the little Monopoly hotels uh, mm. from the game Monopoly. Mm. Uh, but I would imagine that those are barracks of some sort. So these are actually small houses. Um, I took this photo in a NGV, which is um, short for, anyway, in Melbourne, um, National uh, Gallery. Um, so it's a National Gallery in Melbourne, and this is the international one. So there was a light that sort of moved left and right, and I put my camera really low and captured those images this was on a sort of a goldish type board and they were silverish-ish. Anyway, I created the monochrome and I retouched some of the marks here and the shadows were beautiful. So um, yeah, people have all sorts of connotations regarding it. It does strike a conversation because obviously they're not real, but people, um, I mean, yeah, they're much bigger than Monopoly, but they are beautifully um, reflective, which is I like and the shadows are so um, the contrast is beautiful. Yeah, it really is stunning. So these rocks are very near my home, like the other woman in color. Um, this woman is from Brazil. She's a, she's a personal trainer. And uh, yeah, so it's sort of a juxtaposition between soft and hard, alive and still, black and white. And I think... So I entered this, this year, I'm gonna enter it in the landscape category or maybe in the portrait open. So it's a per portrait. So again, it's, it's the whole, rather than a close up. and obviously she's nude, but nothing here is against, um, you know, social media policy. So it's a implied nudity. And, you know, I posed her beautifully like that. I mean, obviously it took us a little while to get to that, but, um, I think she looks beautiful here. Yeah, no, that's studying. Uh, juxtaposition is a great word for that. Mm. And, and is that captured uh, in the camera? No, no, no retouching there? Well, there was some retouching. So she did lie like that. And she did lie on this sort of crack inside the rock. But she lied around here okay. in a smaller. So she was like in a smaller sort of settings. And I, I did capture a larger vista of that rock and what on that photo where she was lying around here, she didn't do this sort of um, pose, which is my favorite pose. So I had to remove the previous one and add that one. So it's not in camera, but for all argument's sake, as long as I don't, you know, it depends on the competition, but for a person hanging it on their walls, she was actually there in situ. So I'm not, um, I've just moved her a little bit. Um, so I belong to the deep state for that matter. Mm. <laughs> So this is a slightly different photo. Um, these guys, I met them in Rwanda after I was uh, deported from um, South Africa, from Johannesburg. They wouldn't let me in. It's a long story, but I ended up in this um, sort of hotel, maybe one star, maybe half a star, um, waiting to go to um, the mountains that uh, those volcano reserve where they have the silverback gorillas near uh, Congo. And these are brothers um, and they worked together and they stood there for a minute after they finished their shift. And I think it's very interesting to see the dynamic between them. Yeah. Well, the, the look on the face of the one who's to our right is a, it's quite unique uh, of an expression yeah. of a human's face. So when you said they worked together, what was their job? Because it looks like he's wearing like rain boots. Yeah, so they are helping around the yard, in the kitchen. These are small jobs. This is more of a charity. So instead of being them being in the streets begging, the co local community has organized this job for them. They do small stuff and um, they get something payment. I think he's the older brother, but this is the wiser guy who controls the whole thing. Um, and he... So they are sort of midgets uh, and, and obviously life is not easy, but um, very honorable people and they posed for me and I gave them a little bit of money and they were happy. So um, I there. like that photo quite a bit. That, and you, you also have such a play with the colors there too, with the white 
uh, and, and the black uh, of the background and the clothing, it, it all plays off it uh, very well. Uh, thank you, thank you. So this is a recent capture about a month ago. I visited this, it's a long story, but anyway, I posed them like this. So this is a husband and wife, and I brought this sort of um, chair, swinging chair, rocking chair from the living room, which was too busy to create a photo there. This paper wallpaper is yellow with orange and blue and red. It, it's unbelievable. They brought it from Europe. Um, okay. I, I brought that coat from my home for him to wear. I mean, I didn't know what's going to happen, but I thought he's the right person to wear that. Um, this is his hunting gun. And this is her mom in this photo. And that's her uncle who was the mayor of a, a big city here in the 50s or 40s. Uh, so he's wearing the mayor's um, sort of symbol. Uh, and if you look closely, I'm not sure how good the video is, you will see something here where my mouse is pointing now. Right. Can you see something there? Take a look. It looks like a person underneath her foot. Yeah. So that's a reflection of this woman. So her image oh, is somehow reflected on this. So this is not exactly a photograph. It looks like a photograph, but I couldn't figure out the material. It, it's slightly curved and slightly painted. So I don't know if it's a painting or, or something, but it's hard to tell. It's in color, but slightly dusty and, 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 and has some texture. Anyway, um, I'm going to enter this under the family portrait category and see what the judges say. Huh? If, if that had been in color, would it have been too busy? Yeah, like so in color, you know, this would be extremely distracting. So yeah. the, the benefit of monochrome, it's actually timeless and it emphasizes shape and form. So you can actually focus on his eyes. I did ask him to open his eyes because he kept closing his eyes. And uh, you can focus on how he puts his hand on the shoulder of the chair and her hands, how she, you know, how she bends her knees. And um, this is sort of a uh, behind them with a chimney. It's sort of a heater. Um, so that was the only place, and I'm, I'm, there was not a lot of space there, so it's in their kitchen. So I'm actually standing behind the bench to trying to squeeze everything in with a wide angle lens without distorting the image too much. Um, yeah, so that's a new thing. Yeah, so this is my huntress. Oh, that's great. So- um, you, you should market this in Texas, I think it'd do well. Okay, well, you yeah. should help me. So I, I, I did see- will. <laughs> I, I saw this woman uh, bending on her fore with this stag on her head, holding it like this. Um, right. And I, may, I contacted her and she said, yes, she wants to have a photo with me. She brought the gun. She brought the stags. She brought the skins. Um, and I brought the saddle that you see here and the suitcase. And this was added in Photoshop. So, oh, okay. um, but the judges said he's the master. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is a great photo. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I just extended one of her curls to hide right. you know, a little bit of her breast. Um, I pointed the gun, you know, I made her move it up and down until it was in perfect position. And, um, yeah, some people say she looks like Kim Kardashian. So I'm not yeah. going to dispute that. No, no, don't complain. We found the barn to hang these for a minute. Um, it was quite cold, but she played the role, huh? Yeah, well, so that's, you're outside of a barn or inside? No, 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 it's inside a barn, but it was a little bit cold. Um, I mean, this is concrete floor. Um, we, we spent about two hours together. I gave her an A3 print as a gift. She's now have a one-year-old child. So um, there is a moment in time when, I engaged some of my models. I mean, they're not professional models. She was a bodybuilder. She competed in Vegas um, and obviously very beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that. that that's the, uh, the running favorite right now. Okay. Um, I actually sold two of these already out of nine. Um, so this 
one title is, I'm very sophisticated with my title. This title is Woman on a Tree. Hmm. <laughs> so um, we spoke about juxtaposition. So it's, you know, dead and alive, soft and hard. Um, they're both vulnerable, but the tree cannot hide its scars. So this is actually in camera. This is, a, I think, a remote tree in a volcano not too far from my home, maybe 40 minute drive. I saw a photograph on Facebook with one of my ex-client and I said to her, where is it? And she drew a map and we went there at night. Um, so this, it, obviously it, it was struck by lightning and you know chopping things and it's a huge tree, but not much left of it now. And um, she enjoyed every minute, to be honest. I was freezing with three layers and she was just you know enjoying the minute. She's a psych psychologist and a lawyer and she now does sex therapy as you would. So um, that's that. that is the most stunning tree. It, it looks like it's it looks like it's a combination of a million different things other than mm. a tree, like mm. elephant. You can go inside. It's it's hollow in these areas. You can go inside. It's it's um, it was struck many times or or and many fires and so it's been through a lot. Um, I'm not sure how it's still standing, but. Uh, Obviously, it had good foundation in many, many years, but uh, yeah, it's not going to be there for long because people put notes on it and stick things and write their yeah. names. And so I have to retouch some of that off. But uh, everything else is actually in camera. So and I went there at night simply because there's too many people during the day. And also, I wanted to remove the clutter in the background. So that's right. the negative space here. This is what I would call a negative space. Yeah, no, that's perfect. You said it, yeah. So um, I was in Wellington for an art show and this uh, beautiful woman, I met her. And after we did some photo session in a studio that I hired, I said to her, there is a, a van that's waiting for us. So we drove there at midnight. The wind was howling. It was really cold, middle of winter in Wellington. And um, I, I tested my lights. I put my camera on a tripod. She ran. She took her clothes off. I brought her this skull of a head and she was holding it. And this is the first photo out of three. The second photo, her hair was all over the show. Her eyes were with tears by the third photo. So this whole thing took less than 30 seconds and she was then, I mean, it was too cold to do anything. But uh, yeah, the graffiti is the name of this uh, photo. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Wellington, is it known for having a lot of graffiti or did you just Well, no, what? no, this is, this is in a sort of a parking lot near a reserve. So it's, it's literally by the sea and, and the council would have taken care of that van within a matter of weeks. So there is no uh, graffiti in Wellington. I mean, there is some alleys and things, but that's allowed. This is um, sort of a nuisance. We, we don't have these things in New Zealand. If you see something like that as a photographer, you grab it by, you know, by the horns because um, nothing like that. And somebody did a beautiful work preparing this van for me. So um, that's that. Yeah, that, okay, that, I, like, I like that one quite a bit as well. That's great. Mm. It, it reminds me uh, of Melbourne, Australia, where there is a ton of graffiti. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it wouldn't have surprised me if you had taken it there. Well, the graffiti there is on alleys. I've been there quite a few times. This is beautiful because somebody has burnt this van down and smashed the windows and, you know, everything is like, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere from here. But uh, so that's why it was still there. But I believe it was taken away very quickly. Yeah, no, that's very rock and roll. That is a, that's a, a great rock and roll photo. So this is, um, I'm standing here. I actually purposely included this sort of rail. So I'm standing on a different sort of ramp. And this is sort of a cycle lane in Auckland. So this is meant for cyclists and people who walk. That's around midnight. And she lied here. It's not the sharpest photo, unfortunately. I need to fix this somehow. But uh, um, yeah, she had a great time, this woman here, a very young woman. And this is the motorway. We call it motorway. We don't call it highway or freeway. This is, you know, New Zealand has its own ways. And these are things, you know, that lit up at night and... Uh, some people came and walked by and she sort of looked at them and they looked at her and they continued walking. So no one <laughs> makes a big fuss. I mean, sometimes I get police coming here. So mm, you have to be mindful of where you are and what you say to people. And some people are very 
conservative and I don't want to offend anyone. So how much higher of the model that are you in that photo? So this is like a this is the rail, this is sort of the handrail. There is there is a road behind me. I'm 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 on a bridge and this is actually a bridge as well. So I'm about um maybe 30 or 40 feet above her. Okay, so like 10 meters, 10. So it's about two meters. stories, two stories above her. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. And I'm I'm using two flashes to lit her because she's quite far away and there's not a lot of ambient light here. It's at night. Right. Mm. And you can see this is one level. And so this is one level, second level, third level. And this is like the fourth level, which is really, um, so all these were here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. So this is sort of a, an underpass, under under a, a, a highway, or or a, and it's made of corrugated iron that was slightly drawn upon. And she wanted to do these running sort of. Um, she's a dancer, and from France. And um, I had to ask somebody who worked there to turn off these lights because they were too distracting. And when I went there about a month ago with that lady from the van, they've ruined this, they've demolished it, they made a concrete huge thing, very modern, but this was beautiful for her to run. And so that's um, titled Escape. Hmm. Yeah, people, that's a great name, yeah. People have a lot of feelings about what it means, um, yeah. Is she running into the unknown there? Yeah, like so she's running into the darkness, like, She's obviously not wearing a lot and she's, I was trying to, yeah, she was actually running and I'm trying to capture her while she's still, you know, having enough light on her because the further she goes in, the darker it becomes. And um, yeah, she was running. Well, the left arm is what is so interesting in that is that it's such an unorthodox way to run. So it looks like she's fleeing. So the, the word escape is, is almost like, it's almost like a panicked run because that yeah, wild yeah. arm swing, I, that, I think that makes it. And that's pretty great. Thank you. I, I tried to imitate that with, with another lady and it's not that easy. I mean, she, she did it naturally. I mean, we don't see ourselves. So the benefit of, of um, the advantage of photography it freezes a moment, which we actually we don't see. And not all, I, I like that. Some people do it more fuzzy and um, you can actually capture motion. So here, there's not a lot of motion capture, even though she's slightly fuzzy, but um, you know, when we run, if we're not professional runners and, and, and we are in a rush and we are hysterical, you know, we would run with our hands all over this show. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah I, I think that's what makes it so powerful. It is like uh, running out of fear. It's great. Mm. Right? Mm. So this is from Tanzania. I had a very big lens on my camera. And so it's a close up because I didn't have time to change lenses while that line was yawning. So, um, and I put it in a circular crop in the nature category this year. We'll see how that fetches. So um, again, in camera, I cannot retouch it. I cannot, you can see some flies here even, that's how sharp it is. But uh, yeah, he's, he's semi smiling, but this is a yawn anyway, yeah. my lion. Mm. Yeah, that's wild. Mm. So this is about five minutes from my home. And she was really worried about her hair. That's why she lifts. She is a professional model and very sort of anorexic. So this is how thin she is. I think she is stunning in this creek. Unbelievable. She didn't want her hair getting in that mud. Is yeah, because she, she was going to a movie about an hour later. And... Um, she lifted her head like this, but the way she closed her eyes and her eyebrows and her lips and how she holds her elbow around her breast is stunning. Yeah, good mixture of curves and angles. Very elegant. So I drive from a supermarket near my house and then I see something from the corner of my eye and I do a U-turn and I see this house which has been damaged by fire and it was fenced, but you know, those fences don't mean a lot to me. So I, I go in and luckily my camera's in the car. So this is the living room. 
and I photograph it thinking I could bring a model here. And when I tried bringing a model a week later, the whole house was gone. So it was demolished. Um, I didn't know how long it stayed there, but so I closed the door. I cleared some of the rubbish from the floor. I had to put some texture here on the roof because it was so dark, but everything else was actually in camera other than the dog. So the dog posed in my studio, uh, a similar sofa to what you saw before. And the yeah. title of this photo is Who's the Boss? And the other, the other one, the dog was the boss as well. So had that yeah. house been burnt? It's it uh, been burnt. It, I'll show you another photo with a fire. So this is the, another room. I think that's where the fire started in that house. Um, and so you can see the woodwork. Yeah. Um, and the and and with the you know all the all the what frames. Are all these skulls just laying around New Zealand. Yeah, we have these skulls. This this <laughs> this cow was shot. You can see the bullet hole where my mouse is. And this guy's name is Versace. And you can see that if you zoom in on his thigh and you can see Medusa Gorgona on it. So he's a stripper. Hmm. Okay. And he did not stand at this location, but I plucked him there as I do. So um, yeah, I think he stands at the right place. Yeah, no, he does. That, that's quite stunning. Yeah, so this was luckily cleared by whoever tidied up this place and I photographed that through a window um, trying to get enough texture coming through from that burnt wood which was very dark using two flashes. I actually came back there the same day after I looked at the photos on my computer and I said okay I actually need better photos and I went there again because I made a few small mistakes and I thought I can actually get better photos and I'm so happy I did because now I can pluck things here and I will. Yeah. So this is portrait in camera. And um, unfortunately, this Celtic cross broke down when I moved it a little bit, just very fragile. Um, and I think she holds it beautifully in the right place. Um, and that's that, not a, not a lot to say. So if people think, but I like the fact that that circle is repeated with this aperture. Mm -hmm. And I like her look, very beautiful eyebrows and very beautiful face. And, and her hair is trimmed beautifully above her eyes. So everything is stunning. Yeah, the, the, the bangs sort of make it uh, for one reason or another, just the, the contrast of a line going straight across her forehead with everything else being sort of circular. Uh, it, it really plays with the different shapes in the images for sure. So that's another circular aperture with a little bit of negative space. I, I first I presented it square or rectangle, and then I thought actually a circular would because this title of this photo is embracing, and I took mm -hmm. this photo in Manhattan, but not with the right background. It was very shiny and reflective. So then I put a different background and just retouch her hair slightly. Um, she's a model and she's a volleyball player and now she has a young child, um, a beautiful woman. Yeah, it's funny. Hmm. So the title of this photo is Hand in the Sand. So original. Yeah, uh, it looks like the cover of a Pink Floyd album. Well. I'm happy for them to buy the rights for this photo. <laughs> right, um, absolutely. If they come up with a new album. Um, so this is in a dune, not too far. Well, about an hour drive from my home. I went there and I actually bought this hand. This hand is used for um, making gloves, maybe in the 60s or 50s. So I bought that piece of wood. It's about foot, one foot high. And I actually plucked it in the sand and photographed it. But when I came back to my studio, I realized this texture, this beautiful texture, which is carved by the wind, was completely destroyed. I couldn't restore it in Photoshop. So I actually went there again a month later without the hand, just photographed the dune, and then added this later with the shadow, trying to make it look real. Mm. So I can't believe those, that, those dunes are an hour from your house. 
Yes, so Amazing. there are a few. They are they are disappearing. Um, it's now a scarce commodity. The the sand is used for construction for cement, and and so there are a few dunes. Um, and kids love you know rolling down the hill. Um, oh yeah, they are stunning. Some of them are very steep. This is so the steep area is right behind me, and I I chose a space where. There is no hills in the background. I was really low using a very wide angle lens, um, trying to capture those beautiful texture, which I enhanced a little bit. But the sky, everything was there. It's, it's stunning. Well, and it's so rare for you to have something such vivid color as well. I've mm -hmm. seen all of these uh, monochromes. Yeah, uh, color is not out. my uh, forte. So I'm trying to, in life, you either evolve or dissolve. So I tried to add a bit of color. And maybe someone will say, wow. And let's see what the judges say. So I'm entering this under illustrative category. So it's open to interpretation. Some people say, well, this is, you know, what we become. And, you know, this is the end of, this is what's left of humanity. Or other people say, stop, you know, the erosion. Um, and, you know, this is the hand saying stop and all that. So it's all open to interpretation. Yeah. So that's my... Last photo from Tanzania under the nature category. So these hippos were, there were lots of them, maybe 60 or 70, and they were playing around. The challenge was to get them in focus quickly enough as they submerged, you know, and went breathing and playing around and fighting. Um, and this couple went into focus at the right time, at the right point. Out of 500 photos, I got one, which I think is good enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, with those guys, they can go underwater for hours. So uh, you, yeah, they were playing, but they they would pop out here and there and then disappear after five seconds. So, and with a telephoto, you need to zoom very quickly and get the focus right, and you have to so almost like extrapolate and think actually maybe they're gonna pop here and aim, and if they come, you're lucky. So, hmm, so it's it's really is sort of a challenge to get them at the same time without cropping anyone's ears and without getting too much clutter in the background. There are a few other hippos here and there, but they're not too prominent, which is great. Right, yeah. So this is in my studio. Um, somebody left a trolley, we call it, at the beginning of our driveway. So I rolled it into my, into my uh, sort of um, parking area. And when she came, she's such a small figure and uh, she had all these tattoos. And this is, this is, this photo is about how we make products out of women, how we, you know, um, objectifying, um, we package them and we sell them. And um, so this is the theme around this, this photo. Okay. Our tattoos are such a unique thing, brass knuckles, and then you got a music note, and then uh, the wild cherries from a video game or, uh, or a slot machine, uh, pretty wild stuff. Well, she's wild. She's had a, a, an interesting story to share. I have a, a, a portfolio item called Eyes Are Windows to the Soul, and those of you who will go to my website, ilanwittenberg.com, can look up that uh, portfolio and she shared a very interesting story about her childhood and how she uh, overcame the challenges around growing up um, and some abuse and, and molestation, you know. And so um, I think part of it is, is her growing up um, and overcoming those demons. Mm. Yeah, gotcha. So this is slightly more... Um, out there a little bit more. I mean, I mean, I think she looks she looks beautiful. She's a European woman who, I mean, she wanted to do nude photos um, here with me, so I took her. And it was raining, so I, 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 I got her to enter into this cave. But you can see how this is slightly dry and this is slightly wet from the rain, and she, um, her body was beautiful, and she was standing there. You know, posing and she enjoyed every minute. So, um, yeah, again, you got beautiful colors uh, playing off of each other with the, uh, the, the white uh, of, the, of the skin versus the dark cave behind her. You have a, a 
Would you consider that a little bit of negative space right there next to her as well? Yeah, right? a little bit. So there's, so photography is all about contrast. So there has to be good separation between her beautiful figure and what surrounds her. If it's all very bright and all very, so it's, it's, you can see how the light comes from here and sort of fades into the cave. It's a natural cave, by the way. Um, so yeah, I, I, I went through this. I, I go walking there almost every day. And about a month or two after this photo was taken, a big chunk of the ceiling fell down and it is not good if, if someone dies during my photo session, right. my reputation yeah. off of them. So um, nothing happened during this session, um, but these things, you know, there's gravity. Hmm. So, uh, but she posed beautifully here. And, and there's another photo where she posed um, beautiful um, woman. So remember we spoke about those dunes. Um, so that's around, it's a place called Bethel's Beach. And so uh, this woman is a nude model and I got her to lie down. She's, she's very toned, very um, lean. And you can see how the sand sort of comes onto her. There's a few photo with her. She uh, said the sand got into all sorts of crevices. She says, this is the term she used. So uh, the sand is over. It's, it's sort of a black sand with um, a lot of uh, brown and yellow and orange. Um, so it suits her complexion. Yeah. So that's another photo. I'm gonna enter this in the landscape in camera. So I'm taking these from above and you can see she's in some sort of a small sort of um, hole in the ground. So I'm slightly from above her and um, maybe 10 feet above her, maybe 12 feet um, with a wide angle lens. So it actually is in camera. Nothing here is retouched. And if uh, photography is all about contrast, did you specifically lay her on that line where- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, she's very good. She posed beautifully and, and she enjoys this. She enjoys her body. Not everyone would feel comfortable but she felt extremely comfortable and enjoyed every minute. So um, I did tell her where to lie because I wanted her to be diagonal and I wanted those lines to be sort of repeating. So we have a little bit of curves here and we have that shade of sand and then she would sort of echo that um, diagonal shape and there's something here to hold her from above. So yeah, we'll see what the judges say. Hmm. Do you know what this object is, Blair? Uh, no, I, I do not. I, at first I thought it was a, like a hat on a stick, but uh, it must be some sort of uh, pot or, uh, or something like that. You can hold over an open fire if you need to be far away from it or something, I don't know. Yes, so this is a bed warmer. So people would stick it into their fire and then put it under their sheets before electric blanket were invented. So these are the hills that I didn't want in some of my photos. Um, and these are, this is the dune, same dune. So this is in the same location within the same two hours that we spent together. And here we have, you know, the- Oh, the hand. Leonardo da Vinci, the hand. So look, I took about six or 700 photos with her and it's sort of a game. And sometimes, you know, I direct her and she does. And, Sometimes she comes with her own ideas and we just sort of tango. You need two for tango. You cannot clap with one hand, player. So <laughs> that's her. Um, so I sort of asked her to do something like that and almost touch that finger. And she did. And um, yeah, beautiful. almost images of uh, well, yeah, Da Vinci, like you said. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. So look, these are sort of footsteps. I. Is, is, is very hard to retouch these, to remove these. Um, but her pose is exquisite and how she's looking into that hand. Yeah, and what it means, you know, so. So this image is titled War of the Worlds. Okay, yeah, it definitely right. looks like a space alien. Yeah, so I bought 20 kg of clay and I asked my daughter to help me create something called surface of the moon 
with some craters and it cracked beautifully. I put it on the big plywood, then I put it on the roof of my home. Um, and for those who don't know what this is, do you know what that is, Blair? No, no clue. So Philip Stark is the designer. Um, it's actually a lemon squeezer. The idea is that you put a glass here and you squeeze a lemon from the top. So I saw it at the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan, maybe 15 or 20 years ago. And I saw it in a local market. It, it's about one foot high, maybe smaller. And so I brought the camera really close so it looks huge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, use, I use two flashes to make it really bright with striking shadows. And then I added the moon here in Photoshop. Hmm. When you say two flashes, are they going off at the same time? or one? Yeah, yeah, I trigger them together. The reason I use two is to get more power um, and I can have more quicker recycling time because I would use maybe half the power on each, but that would create a boof. So um, with that other woman that was against that tree, women on a tree, yeah. I used two flashes. One was on her and one was on the top of that trunk to make it light. So sometimes I use two. And also the one on the cycle path where she was lying, I, I, I added two because you get extra power. Okay. I mean, I could, I could get a bigger machine. It's simply I don't have a bigger flash to use. So I use my own flashes, which are obviously sufficient for something that I do. But you know, photography is all about photons, about light. So if I use something at night, I need light to help me do the things, huh? Yeah. So my daughter used to dance with this sort of uh, top and I found this rhinoceros. It's a baby rhinoceros, it's low maintenance in a local market. And I hired it, borrowed it for some money and I photographed it and then retouched some of the rust. It, I think it's Chinese art, it's hollow. You can actually open that lid, which is sort of a, <coughs> yeah, sort of a saddle um, and I love how the, you know, the rust is coming out green like this and she's holding it in the right place. And um, that's that. Yeah, it brings out the colors of, of the feathers around her. Uh, mm, beautiful color. Yeah. Is that the Brooklyn yeah. Bridge? It is Brooklyn Bridge. So I went there about, um, I went there early morning about six or seven times using the, the 5 a.m. Um, subway and um, I think they're called underground in Manhattan so um, and it was always very hazy or clear when the sun um, started going up from the horizon and then one day it was beautifully cloudy and that's when I took this photo it took me some time to understand which angles because it's quite busy even even early morning there's lots of people already there so yeah. This angle doesn't show the clutter of the houses um, on the on the side of Manhattan, and still showing beautiful texture of these stones. It's such a magnificent story about this bridge and the history and ups and downs and the maintenance and how mm, it was came to be. It, it's a stunning bridge, and I love those leading lines. Um, yeah, and the clouds add some drama. Well, drama. We want drama. Are you okay. holding that camera or is it in a tripod? No, there's no point putting a tripod because the whole thing is vibrating all the time from the trains and the cars below. So this is, I'm holding it, um, yeah. The, uh, I mean, the detail is, is, is amazing. The yeah, I enhance every, it a little each bit. Each and every stone, you know, mm. uh, separate from the others. This is actually the same woman that lied on that rock pool. Uh, on that other photo, she was lying with her bum towards us. Here she is lying, you know, with her front towards us. Um, yeah, beautiful, very feminine, very elegant, very, um, yeah. And this is actually where she was lying down. So this is in camera. Okay. Same cloudy day? Actually, same cloudy day. 
So um, I stepped into the middle of Fifth Avenue and the sun came right behind me. Um, I did remove the American flag, which was slightly disturbing here. And there was a little bit of shadow here from the bottom floor, from the top floors of the building behind me. So I had to sort of clone that out and maybe remove a few buildings from the corners. Other than that, um, yeah, I did add this. I think it's a gannet, which is a local bird. I think I added that here just to add some uh, something off center, something slightly quirky and something to add point of interest because if it's all centric, yeah, we want to add a little bit of oomph. Yeah, you, you don't get to see things in New York all by themselves. You know, it's always yeah, it's busy. gathered with everything else. Yeah, busy. busy. So that, that, that's wild. Uh, yeah, I and I actually, I think it's a beautiful photo of that of that building, and and the history of that building is is extraordinary by itself. So, yeah, I'm I'm delighted to have been able to capture this. So this is a yellow baboon from uh, Tanzania, and um, it was about maybe forty feet from my from my uh, jeep, um, the Land Cruiser. And for some reason, it looked at me. It was actually one of the last photos I took that day. And somehow it locked his eyes with me because usually they're busy doing their stuff. And this is actually the top of the frame. And this is the bottom of the frame. And this is the focus. You see how this is out of focus. So lucky I got, I was able to lock on his eyes um, because I'm a portrait photographer. So, yeah. Yeah, the, the nose almost looks detached because of the uh, the two dark spots uh, next to it. It almost seems to float in the air in three dimensions. That's a, that's a, a really splendid uh, photo. Mm, I love it. So this image is toy titled um, Temptation. Mm. So this is a, a Canon um, placement. So the Canon was sold, I think, to Japan for melting down at the end of World War II because we needed money in New Zealand here for the steel. But this is, these are the bolts where it was positioned. I put a camera above. Um, this is the snake here and uh, everything else is history. Yeah, that, that's a great name for it because it does conjure up the, uh, the snake in the garden image. So this is a photo from my recent visit to Cairo. I have an item called Faces of Cairo, which um, I'm going to exhibit, I've already exhibited um, that this year as part of Auckland Festival of Photography. And most people actually commented on this photo to say, wow, so I'm entering it this year in the portrait in camera. So I didn't remove any disturbing element. Um, it's gonna exhibit also as part of Head On Photo Festival in Sydney um, in October um, this year, hopefully no pandemic. So, um, it's going to be an online exhibition, but I'm going to be part of the festival. It saves me, you know, uh, expenses if I exhibit these online and not hire a gallery and all that. So it's not the yeah. same, but uh, yeah, this is it is. So I love how he looks at me, slightly suspicious. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking directly at you, but catching your eye. It is. It is like I, I know you're up to something. Mm. So you, I actually asked their permission. This is not candid. I asked them if I can take their photos and if they say no, I go away. So he was waiting on a bus stop. I took maybe five or eight photos and that's one of them. And uh, I love it. Yeah, that's great. So oh, wow. this image is titled Yawning Camel. So I actually rode that camel. I paid extra money just to be there early morning and I had an option to ride a horse or a camel so I asked a camel and they I had to pay extra just because they said oh you're going to be on this hill you're going to be able to see things from above anyway I would have gone through here had I not paid extra so I paid a little bit extra after haggling and the camel was yawning so this is actually in camera I did add these camels later so these camels were about here in another photo and I sort of move them here to create a little bit of dynamic. Um, other than that, you know, those pyramids were here and I just removed some jet line from the clouds and 50,000 plastic bottles that were here and some Jeep. Oh my God, really? um, 
filled with litter. Mm. So um, that's that. So this is me on a on the blue moon <laughs> when I'm not shaving. As you can see, I, I see I can have big issues. Mm. Right, as you're uh, changing. What in the world is that? Well, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> well, it looks like you could quite easily. Mm. So this is my zebra. Have you ever seen a zebra taken from that angle? No. Uh -uh. Well. You always see the big stripes on the side, not the tight stripes on the mm. leg. So this is actually a stuffed zebra. It was hung off a wall in Melbourne, and I just added the clouds behind it. Okay. People love this photo. Love. Yeah, that's great. So here I play around in the studio. Do you know what she's wearing here on her breast? Uh, no. Is that uh, like the tops of a fruit or something? It's a beef schnitzel. <laughs> the raw meat. Is so bright red that you had to. Well, I bought I, I bought that those sheets specifically to match that color, and I asked her to put a lipstick that matches that color, and I gave her these sort of horns to hold. Um, yeah, that's that. Very Lady Gaga with the mm, Lady bro. Gaga with her meat. Yes. <laughs> so this is a landscape. I think it's made of three or four photos. Uh, Piazza del Campo in Siena. So they have horse races uh, here twice a year, or they had the Palato, I think it's called. So okay, people, yeah, I've seen, the, I've seen that. Yeah, so it's not, not live, but uh, you know, images of. Yeah, so it's, 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 I, this is before I become a professional photographer and I went there on a cloudy morning in November and it was slightly cold, so not too many tourists. Um, I love this. So you said there's three photos combined to make that? Yeah, so there's one finishing here and maybe another one here. And, and so I stitched them together. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Because I didn't have the wide angle lens and, you know, if I'm good enough, I can stitch them if they're without distortion, yeah. So that's on top of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Right. We can see the Eiffel Tower here. I'm not sure what happened to these. I mean, some people call them gargoyles. They're actually grotesque. So the gargoyles are the ones that spout water and the grotesques are the ones that uh, guard. And I went there specifically after seeing Walt Disney, the hunchback from Notre Dame, because I knew there was something at the roof. And the first time I went there, after about 20 minutes, a lady said, that's it, finish for the day. And then I went there the other day and then they were on strike. But I'm a bit obsessive compulsive, otherwise I don't get things done. So I went there the third day and I took my time to compose this. Yeah, mm. that is amazing. Do you sell that? I actually sell that, yes. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is amazing. Uh, well, I'm not sure what happened because there was a big fire about two years ago and-, and Yeah, was, um, that's what I was about to ask you. It, it, it survived. Yeah, so it survives in my photo and um, I love it. Yeah. You can see the signs of time because if you look at Wikipedia, this was renovated around 1400s and it survived World War II and um, on and on. So these things are quite ancient. So this is the reason I went to um, Tanzania because of this um, photo. So um, do you know what she's wearing? Uh, I thought it was nothing, but... Um mud yeah it's a, mud. It's, a, it's a cleansing mud from morocco so i saw her online and i sort of got in touch with her and she had beautiful hair she used to be a model and then um when i when i saw her coming to my studio i said god so she had very sort of tomboyish hair so i said just put the mud on your hair um so this dried beautifully just before we did another photo which you'll see in a minute. So um, yeah, beautiful. This is in my studio just before we did um, another photo. So yeah, um, 
in camera portrait. Okay. Um, there's a place in New Zealand called Meraki Boulders and near Christchurch in the South Island. So there's big boulders. No one knows exactly how they came to be. These are about three or four feet in diameter. Um, yeah, so that's my Meraki Boulders impression. What is it looking out over? Is that just uh, lava rock? So these are like spheres. They're balls. Um, they're huge. And that's that's the sea. So that's in the beach. Oh, that's the sea. Okay. The beach. Yeah, yeah. And these, you know, the cloud drama and all that. Yeah, lots of drama in that. Mm. So this photo is titled Climbing Up. Um, I This is the same rope we saw before in The Temptation. Mm -hmm. So I this is a bunker, World War II bunker. I tied it up from this sort of ventilation hole and um, I got Vendy to stand here. She's a, she's a weightlifter. So good triceps and biceps and gluteus maximus. Um, and she stands beautifully looking at the camera. Yeah, yeah stunning. Mm. But yeah, you, she does look powerful for sure. She, she's, she's very strong. I, I did maybe two or three other photo sessions with her since. She's a stunning woman. So that's hard to see, but I title it a mandala. So it's a nude mandala. Um, yeah, you have to purchase the print, which would be three, three feet um, diameter. And um, it's really is beautiful. It's the same model in different poses? It's the same model in different um, sort of positions. I've never seen anything like that. That's really cool. It uh, works well because she's lying on a dark background and her hair is sort of white bluish. And, yeah. uh, and she moves her hips beautifully. Devil is in the detail. So I think we've taken a lot of time. This is already um, an hour. Uh, I'm not sure how much you're going to edit out of this, but this is my fine art collection. Obviously, we can. We wanted to do other collections, but I think we ran out of time, and I I know it's getting late at your end. Um, I hope you got something good out of this. Oh, this is this is a fantastic voyage. I appreciate it. I think you're right. I think an hour is is about uh, as long as we can hold anyone's attention. But to I, I had only seen a handful of these pieces, so it was uh, this one is a great one to end on. It's such it just looks like an eye looking at you, and uh, mm. just so uh, that's powerful. Well, I really appreciate your time, and yeah, in the future, it looks, oh, uh, there it's I, my I pleasure. Hear, I want to hear how you do in the competition. So well, sure I want to, to, uh, I'm one of the judges. They won't let me judge my photos for some reason. Isn't that weird? Mm. Yeah, well, you're trying to go for the all-time master. So uh, well, I want, I'm a master now. I want to become a grandmaster, and I need ah, one more gold. One more gold to become. Okay, <laughs> my friend. Well, 